thanks for joining us today, everyone. Uh, I'm excited to go over the Bullhorn Academy November webinar. Again, my name is Ryan Nicholson, and today we're going to be taking a look at a few ways that you can keep in touch with your candidates using the Bullhorn system. Everything that we covered today is, has documentation that's going to go along with it, so you'll receive a link after this webinar if you want to dive into some more details after you've uh, finished with this webinar. So today what I want to cover that we are specifically going to go over is exporting candidate mailing information. We're going to take a look at doing mass mailing from a list of candidates. And then lastly, we're also going to look at when you might want to consider one of our marketplace partners for mass mailing, what situations that Bullhorn mass mailing will work for you and what situations would require you to, to look at engaging one of our marketplace partners. Now, the first thing that we're going to be taking a look at is exporting our candidate information for uh, a physical mailing, such as thank you cards. In this scenario, what I want to do is I want to send out thank you cards to candidates that I have helped place. Now, while this is the particular scenario for this example, we will this process can be applied to anything that you would require a physical mailing address for, such as sending out tax information or something else towards the end of the year. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my bullhorn up here for all of you. And I've got my placement list here. So as we discussed, I want to send a thank you card to everyone that I've placed within the last quarter. And I want to give them that personal touch because I really appreciated working with them and I want them to remember and have a good association with me in the future. So what we're going to do is we're going to run a search to find those individuals, then we're going to export their information so that we can use it with a third party tool uh, to perform a mail merge or something along those lines so that we can create mailing labels or send it to a third party to actually print out those cards and get them mailed out. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to run a search on the placements to find the candidates that we that are impacted by this. There's going to be a few steps to this process. The first thing is searching the placement list. Then we're going to grab the candidate mailing address and we're going to talk about why we're taking those additional steps here in a few moments. The particular search that I'm going to run for this is specific to my company. So you may have different needs. One of the things that you'll want to consider when you're building these searches out is exactly who your audience is and how you're going to approach finding those individuals. So for example here, when I go to run this search, I'm, there's actually a few statuses I want to exclude. So anybody that had a placement that was rejected or that had been terminated, I'm going to exclude them from my search. So this is a thank you card to say, it was really great working with you. So if somebody was terminated, that might be sending um, a, a message that I don't want to send. So I'm going to make sure to exclude those folks from this particular search. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use a date to determine who's I'm who exactly is this going to be sent to. Now, for your own purposes, you're going to have to decide which one works best for you. So each company is different. I'm going to be using the date added fields to say that any for placements that were added between a certain period of time. For you, it might be the start date might be a smarter one for you to use. Depending on how long of an approval process you have, you might have a large difference between your start date and between when your placement was added. Now for my purposes, I'm going to be using the date added just because when I add a placement to my database, within an hour, there's an approval process that, that goes through. So the date added and uh, the approval process is very short, but we also, our placements tend to start very quickly within a week or so of that. So the, the start date and the, the date added isn't important to us, but you might want to decide based off of your own business how which one works best for you. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to run a search that's date added. And again, this is our additional criteria search. If you don't have date added, you may need to select it or add it as a field. And then you're going to want to toggle for a range here. You have a couple of different options. You can do a within, so you can do like the past 90 days. Because today's November 16th, I um, 
I'm not exactly at the perfect breaking point for a quarter, so I'm going to run a very particular search for the dates. But if it was the beginning of the month or the end of the month, past 90 days might work for me. So what I'm going to do right now is I've got this date added and I'm just going to do the whole quarter. So we use a calendar quarter at my company, not a fiscal quarter that we've we've set differently. So we're just going to go with October, November, and December just to get the, the fourth quarter taken care of there. And then we're going to run a search. Now when I run this search, this is going to bring back all of the placements that meet my requirements, um, but it's going to bring it back for everyone that has a placement. And for my thank you cards, I wanna do them for the folks that I've specifically placed, not for my whole company. If I were an admin that's doing this on behalf Half of all of my recruiters are on behalf of my salespeople I could do the whole thing but since I'm doing this as the recruiter for only my folks I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna select my placements now you may run into um, issues if you select my placements and you don't see the right number of placements coming back um, or if you see a, a completely different uh, results that you were uncertain of. That might be if you have a split desk. So at my company, we don't do split desk. My recruiter is my salesperson. So all of the jobs are owned by my recruiters. And so I can just use this my placements and I don't have an issue. If you see that the numbers are looking very odd when you go to use this my placements filter, you may want have to employ the use of this candidate recruiter filter. So this is a column that you can add by going to the columns drop down here and filtering for it. That'll be the person, the recruiter that is associated as the owner of that candidate that was placed. So depending on your exact setup, whether you're a split desk or you're not a split desk, you may need to take a different approach, but the end result is the same, where you either will use this filter and type in that particular person's name and then filter for them, or you would want to use the user's drop down to filter down to my placements if you're not a split desk. Now, at this point, I've got the placements that are important to me. These are everyone that has been, that's in a, a placement that's been added within this particular quarter. Now I want to send a card to each one of these candidates, but one of the things that I can't do is I can't get the candidate's physical address from this list. If I go to export this list as it is right now, I'm not going to have their mailing address, which is what I need. So I have to find a way to get this candidate information along or to get the candidate's information for their address alongside everything else. And the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna take my data here, I'm gonna take my 18 records that I know are the ones that I wanna work with, and I'm going to add them to a tear sheet. Now the reason that we're gonna add them to a tear sheet is that's gonna keep them grouped together, and then I'll be able to run a search on my candidate list. Now my candidate list is a list that I can add addresses to, so it'll allow me to Ex create a list that I can export and then perform my mail merge or send it to my third party in order to email or in order to have them build out uh, the the cards that I'm going to have sent out. So what I'm going to call this is I'm going to call this uh, mail Q4. You can call it obviously whatever you want, and I'm going to add that to the tear sheet. Now, there's no need for me to go to the tear sheet list. I'm just going to jump right over to my candidate list here, and now I'm prepared to just run a search for a tear sheet. So what you would want to do is you go to your search option here under the candidate list, and there is a tear sheets option under additional criteria. If you don't see it, again, just like the date added fields, you may have to search for it under the available fields, um, and you may call tear sheets something else depending on how your exact setup. We may be referring to hot lists or something along those lines. In my particular instance, we've got tear sheets. And what I can do here is I can just run a search for that particular tear sheet that I've named. Uh, so we've got our mail Q4 here. And when I go to run that search, that's going to bring me back the candidates that have been placed. Now I'm able to actually run uh, my exports and I'll have a CSV file or an Excel file with all of the relevant information in it. When you go to export a CSV file, you, one thing you want to keep in mind is that you don't want 
to export any more information than you need. So you may impulsively just want to go, all right, let me just export this list. This is good to go. But this list in particular is my day to day. This is how I work kind of list. And so it's got maybe a lot of information in it that has nothing to do with my mail merge. They, I, all I need is addresses. I don't need the source. I don't need the date of their last note. That's not going to help me send out or prepare a bunch of envelopes for uh, the, the thank you card. So what I want to do is I want to have a very clean, simple list to work with. And the reason for that is, is that's going to speed up the time it takes for the export to run. And also it's going to allow us to only have the information that we need so we can just have a file good to go and we don't have to go back and edit things or change things after the fact. So what I could do is, is I could go in and manipulate all of these columns and remove the ones I don't need and spend 10 minutes doing that or I could set up a layout that already has that for me which is what I've done here so if you go to the columns drop down I'm using a custom layout I'm gonna click mailing list here and it automatically pulls up the the results that I'm looking for so it's got my address it's got my title and all the information that I need in order to perform my export now the way that I built this is I literally just had a list view that I set up these columns for and then you go and you cr and you click create under columns here and you could have that always ready to go and then when you're done uh, with your particular actions you can just reset that and go back to your normal list view and continue working your day to day so you want to have custom layouts for the feature or for those situations where you need a very particular set of columns so at this point all I need to do, I've got my columns set up how I want them. I've got all of the individuals that are involved with the mailing that I want to do. Now I'm ready to export them. So I've selected them, the, the checkbox here to select all of my results. And in the drop down down here, if I go up to the number selected, I go to the bottom, there's export as CSV. Now you yourself may not have that feature. Um, you may have to have your admin do it. So your standard users may or may not, depending on your particular setup, have the ability to export because you have tight controls around security and you don't want somebody running off with your data. And that's the, that, so you may have to work with an admin. If you're a standard user, you may have to work with an admin in order to get access to this feature but you just click the export a csv file and it's going to process that and file and create a, an excel file for you to work with now you saw there that it was a very quick process for us now i can download this file and i've got an excel file that has all the details that I need in order to perform a mail merge. Now at this point, this is something where I may have to go in and go, all right, some of these folks are missing addresses. I might have to clean them up or find out what their addresses are. I can um, take this information and you do something with it at this point. So we're not gonna cover how a mail merge works if you're gonna be doing printing labels or something like that. That's something that you can always look up online or if you have someone that's particularly savvy with Excel, they should be able to show you how to do this pretty simply. Um, but it gives you all of the items that you need, the street address broken out from the city, the state, the country, and the zip. You'll be able to take this information and provide it to either your third party or to your admin and then they can run with it and get the letters mailed out or you can use this as a jumping off point to hand write out your letters if that's something that's that you prefer to do so that's everything that you would need to do in order to perform a, a physical mailing for your candidates at this point what i want to take a look at is what we're going to do for a mass mailing so we covered thank you cards or a physical mailing of some kinds at this point what we want to take a look at is what if I want to do a mass email? What if I have a ton of candidates with placements ending soon? So maybe it's the end of the year and I just want to check in with folks, or maybe I do this every quarter or every month where my candidates who have placements that are ending, I want to check in with them, make sure that they remember me and see if they, if I could help them out in any way with getting their next placement. So in order to do that, we're going to do a lot of the same um, actions that we did before but there's a there's a couple of little differences so the first thing that you need to do is you need to have some sort of list to work with so we would do the same thing where we go back to our placements here and then we would run a search and and have our individuals that we want to 
to actually email. But for this particular instance, because I do it every month, I have a favorited search that I'm going to use. So I go to my favorites here and I click on upcoming ends. And this is going to give me a list of my folks who are involved, who are soon to be ending their placements. And all I did for that was I did the additional criteria just like last time. I changed the field so we didn't do date added or start date. Instead, we're using the scheduled end date, which again, you may have to just find that field in your drop down and, and add it. But I saved that search so that when I go to do this on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis, I don't have to rem I don't have to go through the physical act of setting up that search every single time. And one of the things that you want to keep in mind with the favorite searches is that the dates don't change. So if I need to change this beyond uh, a particular, so if I go to visit this search three months from now, I may need to do, I may need to change these dates so that they reflect the particulars of the search that I'm trying to do. If I want to do Q1 2018 versus Q4 2017 or something like that. Anyways, We've got our list here and we're ready, we're ready to start performing a mass mail. So in theory, what you could do is just select all of these um, results. And if you go to your drop down here, you could potentially just do email contacts or email candidates associated with that placement. Now, that's fine for very short or very small list of folks. I only have 13 records here. I may consider doing that. But in this instance, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create another tear sheet. Now, the reason that I'm going to create another tear sheet is that I want a record or I want to keep track of this particular action. So I want to be able to refer back to the mass mail that I sent in Q4 of 2017 so that I can see exactly who it was that I mass mailed. If I were to just email them from the list using this drop down, there's going to be notes generated and there's going to be a way to find the information, but it's going to be a very manual process. I'm not going to have a particular record that goes, this was everyone that I emailed on this day for this purpose. So by using a tear sheet, I can then create a distribution list that will allow me to do that. So if I go to my tear sheet list here, we're going to see that I've got a mass mail here for Q4 and these are the candidates that I'm going to be mass mailing. At this point, you would either email from the tear sheet and use that as your record of saying that this is exactly, these are the folks that I reached out to, or you would take the additional step to build a distribution list. Now this feels like multiple steps of the same thing. I made a tear sheet. Why am I making a tear sheet and then creating a distribution list? The reason that you may want to do that is, is if you use tear sheets, like at my company, we use tear sheets to group together candidates. We, it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with mass mailing. And if I've got 150, 350 tear sheets, I might get confused. If I create a distribution list, then I know these are the records that I want to use there that in, indicate that I have mass mailed them. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And when I go to send this mass mail and actually perform the filling out of the message and everything, I can either use the email to field or if I wanted to email all, I mean, there's 20 something people on this list. If I wanted to add them again, I could easily use this distribution list drop down. And not only is it going to have all of them grouped together, but it's going to warn me if one of these records here, if Jerry or James or someone has no email address or a bad email address, it's actually going to warn me about that so that I can go back in and clean up my records and go, okay, Timmy's on this list, but he has a bad email address. So I need to fix his email address before I go and send this mass mailing because he's not going to get that email address or not going to get that email, even though I thought I sent it to him. So it's nice to have that feature to warn you about missing email addresses. And you're going to get that if you use this distribution list functionality. So we highly recommend um, as a best practice that you use mass mail or that you use a distribution list when doing your mass mailing. And then you can go and drop in your distribution list, use a message template to pre populate that information. It even does personalization for a mass mailing. We have a lot of different options for that so that it looks personal. So somebody won't know that they're getting a mass mailing. They'll get it addressed to them directly so that if Bob's on my list here, he's not going to see hello first name. He's going to see hello Bob. I'm going to receive a copy of this mass mail and I'm going to see hello first name because I'm not on the distribution list. I'm the user sending the mass mail. It's like a receipt for me. 
Now, there are some limitations with this mass mailing. This mass mailing functionality in Bullhorn is really intended for you to be able to quickly fire off uh, an email to 10 or 15 different people to check in with them. What you don't have a lot of access over or control over is, or insight into is analytics. How many times people have opened up the email? How, if I wanna use a newsletter, if I wanna use mass mailing for marketing purposes, you can, technically do that within Bullhorn, but you're gonna run into some limitations. So at this point, this is where you might wanna start considering one of our mass mailing partners. So our partners all work the same way, where if you have a distribution list that you built, you can push that distribution list to one of our partners. So we're gonna highlight a couple of those partners right now. So all of our partner information is located on our website. That's marketplace.bullhorn.com. Again, you'll get an, a link after this or an email after this with a link to that so that you can look at some of our partners. Now, we're not going to go over every single one of our marketing partners. We're gonna go over some of uh, just two of them, but there's always new partners being added. So when you're ready to say, I, this is something that I'm interested in, I, can you, you want to visit this website and filter down for marketing purposes and you'll be able to see who our latest and newest partners are so the first one that i want to talk to you all about is vertical response vertical response is really helpful in that they have a great uh, lit group of templates that you can work from. You can build a really nice newsletter and you don't have to have a lot of experience with HTML and um, all those types of things in order to build out. You don't need to be a graphic designer to send this email. It's very easy to use and you can use their templates to, and adjust them to your branding as you see fit. Additionally, you get some really great insights into the analytics. So there's device breakdown, there's um, items like how how much are they looking at this? How, how much are my subjects being read? Those types of things. So vertical response is great for an ease of use situation. Vertical response also has a free trial. So if you're interested in taking a look at and playing with one of these features, there's not any risk there. So you can reach out to vertical response and get an account with them and then contact us and, and we'll turn on that feature for you. Again, on the Marketplace website that I just showed to you, as well as the email that you're gonna get after this, there's links to, so you can dive into this a little bit more to look at pricing structure and, and how the accounts work for vertical response. We also have an integration with Constant Contact. I'm sure most of you have heard of Constant Contact. Um, they've got some great functionality with templates as well. So they have a really easy to use um, user-friendly template template building system and you don't have to have a lot of technical skill in order to build a really nice looking email. Additionally, they have some really great analytics as well to tell you who's looking at it on their phone versus their their desktop or their desktop. You can see who how well each one of your campaigns is doing, who which subjects grab the most insight in or who results in the most opens those types of things so this is really helping you from a marketing standpoint of i, I want to get more details into the effort that i'm putting into my marketing campaigns how can i make sure that i'm getting my roi um, on that particular activity so both of these constant contact and vertical response have free trials. So I highly recommend you check out our website. And if you're curious about getting some additional functionality for mass mailing, uh, these are some great partners. We also have additional partners that you can take a look at. You just want to go on to the Marketplace website itself. And once you're on there, you'll see that there's an option for engagement and marketing. And you can filter down and see what all the different partners are at any given time. And again, we're constantly adding partners um, on a, you know, practically a monthly basis. So there may be new partners coming in that'll be able to to solve some of your needs in the future if constant contact and vertical response don't necessarily fit so I want to thank you all again today we discussed ways to export uh, candidate mailing information so that we could send a physical mail um, we also looked at mass mailing a list of candidates and how we can use bullhorn to do a really quick just fire off a check-in email and then we also so took a look at our marketplace partners to see who can help fill a gap of items that Bullhorn can't quite solve for you um, in, a, in a very efficient and easy to use manner. 
so at this point, I want to open the floor up to questions. And uh, and so I'll go ahead and check in with you all and see what, what kind of questions we've got. Awesome. Thank you, Ryan. So the first question we have is, why can't mass emails be sent from a tear sheet or from the list view? So the, that's a great question. Um, so as I had uh, mentioned earlier, if you're on any of the list views, not just the placement list view, you have a lot of options for just shoot off an email to your candidates. It's about the size of the mass mailing. Um, so if you're doing five or six real quick candidates, yes, by all means, use the email candidates button. It's there for your convenience. But if you're going to be doing a larger campaign, you want to use a distribution list or a tear sheet to keep track of that information. And so that if there's people with missing email addresses, it'll allow you, it'll tell you whether or not that um, that record is missing an email address. And how many records can be exported from a list view at one time? Sure, so the exporting functionality, um, so when you're actually, if you wanted to do your entire database, we wouldn't recommend it. Um, there's not a hard limit to say, there's 500 records and you shouldn't export anymore. What do you want to keep in mind is when you go to run one of these exports is as many columns as you have, that the more columns you've got and the more complicated columns, so if you have a column, like for instance, the submission column, and it's linking over to something else. So in this case, if I were to export this list with the submissions column, it's not gonna export Chris's record and say he has 22 submissions. It's actually going in the CSV file, list the submissions, all of them, which means that's a lot of data. And when you start having a ton of columns and a ton of linked over uh, items like that, you may see that it's really slow to export, you might run into timeout issues. So I really recommend if you're, you want to use this exporting functionality for mass mailing a few hundred candidates or something like that. Um, if you're looking for a, I want to get all of my candidates moved into another system or something like that, then I would highly recommend you look at backups or uh, our API or something like that instead, because that's going to be a much more efficient way for you to get that large amount of data out of your system. I tried to run an export and it didn't work. What should I do now? So that's that's kind of touching on exactly what I was just talking about, where um, you may have a, you may have come across that there's a hard limit of maybe like 20,000 records or something along those lines, um, but you may not be at the, may, may not have a large number of records, you may only have 500, and you're still getting a timeout or you're still getting an error, and that again ties into the sheer number of columns and those linked over columns that will populate more information. So the notes column, for example, will actually populate note bodies when you go to export them, and there's just so much data that's trying to be exported out of your system that the your browser may crash or something along those lines. So again, that export's really meant to be a simple, just I need to take care, I need to get 20, 30, 100, 1,000 records out of my system, rather than using it as another means to maybe repopulate a, a CRM that you've been using or something along those lines. You wanna use a backup or your APIs or something like that to get that large amount of data out of your system. Okay, and the last question that we have time for today, do I need a certain product edition to integrate with a vertical response or constant contact? Uh, no, actually, all of our marketplace partners are available to all of our editions. So you have team edition, corporate edition, enterprise edition, it doesn't matter. You can integrate with any of these partners, and there's no cost associated with that. So you may have to have an account with constant contact or vertical response. So you'll want to talk with their sales team to see what they require. But from a bullhorn, from the side of you asking bullhorn to integrate with constant contact, there's no fees, there's no restrictions on who can have it. You can just request it and we'll turn it on for you. Okay, everyone, that's it for the webinar today. We're just about out of time. Um, there were some great questions asked that we didn't get a chance to get to, so we're happy to handle those offline, and we'll be sure to follow up right after we wrap up. Thank you, everyone.